Hello and welcome to another episode of Hashtag Disruption Dialogues, a Markets and Markets podcast series for growth-minded strategy, market intelligence and competitive intelligence professionals. Hello and welcome to another episode of Disruption Dialogues. I'm Pranjal Sharma. I'm an author based in New Delhi. Today I'm going to be in conversation with Daniela Meyer. She is the CTO of Automotive at Dell Technologies. Thanks for joining us today, Daniela. Hello and thanks for the invitation. I'm really glad to be here. We will discuss a very exciting topic of the future of autonomous driving. A lot of us are still driving ourselves. There are different versions of autonomous driving which are there in many vehicles today. The objective of today's conversation is to understand from Daniela what is happening currently, how do we understand autonomous driving, and what does the future lie for us. So, Daniela, if you can give us an overview of the concept of autonomous driving, it will be a great beginning for us. Okay, I think then it would be the easiest way to explain shortly the six levels of autonomous driving, because that's important. So it starts with the level zero, where you get either a warning or you have a temporary brake or steering intervention. Important, it, it is temporary. So there is no continuous driving dynamic task. That are examples like an air automated emergency brake, which most of the car have already implemented. And the next level, the level one, it starts to get a continuous assistant function. This assistant is either by braking or by steering in the level one. And in the level two, you have a combination of those. It is very important to understand if you have such a car of level zero, one or two, the driver stays every time in the responsibility. It is an assistant function, not an autonomous function. According to McKinsey, they expect that this level two will be achieved in 55% of the cars already in 2025. When we go then to the level three, it starts with autonomous driving. This level is really quantum version because here we have a split between the responsibility of the driver and the vehicle. The vehicle is only driving in specific conditions autonomous. Let us assume we are on a highway with two lanes. You have a barrier in the middle to the oncoming traffic. In this case, the system is operating and the vehicle takes the responsibility. But the driver must take over if the system response is coming. And that is the reason why also some car manufacturers will skip this level because of the split. It is a difficult discussion at this point of time. In the level four, we have the first time autonomous driving, real autonomous driving. In this case, it is geofenced. For example, like Bosch together with a parking system provider are providing ticketless and cashless parking wallet so you can drive in with your car, leave the car, the parking is done automatically. When you come back, your car is in front of you. That's the first time, but it is geofenced. And only in level five, where you have a full autonomous ride. So that is, I think, the right basic framework to go uh, into the further discussion. So the final part, the part six that you mentioned, fully autonomous, is fully autonomous driving the same as driverless car? In general, you can say it. It doesn't matter if the car driver is in or out. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. It could be also that you have a private car, but you have not to use a steering wheel or to use a pedal. It is driving completely for you and has a full responsibility. In general, and it is a driverless car. Right. So that's a good point. I think it's a driverless vehicle, but you could have a person who can possibly drive inside it or just passengers and no driver. There will be not longer the possibility for the driver to have an intervention because the full responsibility is by the vehicle. But for sure, it can be owned by one person. I only wanted to highlight that it is not every time only combined with a commercial version. Yeah. But I think the practical aspects of what uh, we have seen from many experts is that the final stage is uh, some time away. It can maybe yeah. in very ideal conditions, but it's really the main effort of the industry is in the first to five levels. Is that correct? Yeah, I would totally agree. When we leave the commercial vehicles out of the discussion, I would totally agree. 
due to the high investment which is needed in the infrastructure. They also the passenger vehicles concentrating in the moment on the level one, two and three. I'm going to pick up on two of these points. One point you made is that the investment required in infrastructure. So it means that there is also an effort outside the automotive industry, which is going to support autonomous driving. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. So if you really want to go to fully autonomous driving, I step now one um, element back. Okay. Think about how you learned driving. You made the first experience with driving already as a child. Then you learn to drive a bicycle in the traffic, hopefully without an accident. And then you were teached during the driving lessons. And as you know, most accidents are done at the beginning. A system on level five must be capable to do it directly. So what the system must be able to identify is all objects, must be able to understand how it shall react under the traffic rules. And therefore, you must have either the experience or you must have more information available to make the right direction. To get more information, it is important that the traffic system has roadside units, which also provides information about the near traffic. So there must be cameras or other sensors installed who are identifying all objects around the vehicle, or communicating with the vehicles about the risk which they identified, the objects where they are, in which direction they are going, with the speed they have, to then enable the vehicle really to react in a performance which is similar to a human drive. And there you need communication, there you need the sensors. That is the investment we are talking about. I think that's a very important uh, aspect that it is uh, important for the city authorities to manage this. But let me ask you about Dell Technologies. There is a very interesting part. Tell us about what is the role that uh, your company is playing in this. Are you working with uh, many car makers? Are you developing technologies for the cities? Who are you working with? I would say we work with all the companies you said. Um, before, because we have really a huge product portfolio in the area of storage, server, and also 5G. And when you think about data, what must be done? The data must be stored. It must be analyzed directly near the source. Therefore, we have edge systems with the performance for specific use cases. We have the 5G to enable a wireless communication. And for the data analysis and in the core system, we have also the technology to grow with the data. And during the uh, data lifecycle, we must ensure that we follow the data groups. The companies are not able to buy upfront and plan the real volume. So it must grow according to the need. Okay. When we need a performance to be able to achieve the bandwidth, to achieve the needed compute power, and to avoid latency. We must be able to share data between the companies so that they can collaborate together and make the data available in a secure form. And for all of this, you need an ecosystem with a lot of partners, which Dell Technology has. What is important to understand is a consistent technology across this edge, the cloud and the core that provides us the possibility to limit cyber security attacks. It enables to you have an effective monitoring and fast reaction and to ensure the availability of the data which you need across the product lifecycle. In our Dell technology, we have several offers which really support this. We have a multi-cloud strategy so that we can really identify the best solution across all of these data platforms. We have an Apex model, which allows the customer to follow with the cost, the growth. And we have also OEM teams for a customer. They build complete new customer solutions according to the new needs based on our technology. This is very exciting. Uh, I think you've explained very well the various parts of it, but I, I would think that the element of edge computing 
which is very close to the vehicle and and the area where it's operating is critical because you need quick analysis of the data and you need quick response time and you need quick instructions to the vehicle and also the driver in the case of assisted uh, autonomous driving so that means that uh, there is a lot of computing that you have to work towards yes but we have the product to do this to be honest the major topic in the moment is that yeah, that the stakeholder must align on a common data protocol, on a common technology, how to communicate. They are the major challenges there. It's not so much a question of technology. It is a question of aligning on the technology and then on the other hand side, how to manage this data. Because think about the value of this data and the risk, privacy, cyber attacks. These are the challenges we have to solve. Let me talk about you, Daniela, your own experience in this field. I think the future is the key that I have to ask you. What kind of disruption do you see in autonomous driving? You mentioned the six parts of it, but in the next five years, what are the basic changes or the important changes that you think will happen that uh, everybody should prepare for? Okay, let me go through levels. I'm sure that the ratio of the connected vehicles and the models with level two and level three will increase continuously. Because it really saves time. You, if you are in a traffic jam, you can read if you have a level three. Okay, so the number of wasted time, it's decreased. Do you know that in London in 2022, an average driver lost 155 hours? in the traffic jam. In Chicago, it was nearly the same, according to this INRIC scorecard. It's really interesting. So with a level three, you would avoid it. With a level four, I think that will also increase, mainly in areas which can be easily monitored, okay? And where is a high benefit for the user. Like this, what I said, the parking, or a shuttle between airports and stations that really would increase the benefit. Level five, I have also problem to make a forecast. As I said, you have to do high investment in the infrastructure. And due to the economic situation driven by the pandemic, driven by the war, I would not try to make a forecast there. Even from my point of view, it is important to expand into this infrastructure because it will dramatically improve also our climate based on a smooth traffic and will reduce and will improve the mental health. If we have an increasing traffic growth, that will happen, definitely. The risk for the mental health, especially regarding noise and stress, is so high that we have to do something. So that's my hope in this topic, but I'm not able to make a forecast. We from Dell for sure are committed to this. We will innovate we will invest in this and with our partner. I think the most important point would be the way that people look at vehicles in terms of taking responsibility. I think issues of accountability will become important because, yeah. you know, it's not just the driver, there's a vehicle which is also taking decisions. So I think we are in for a lot of disruption in the way vehicles move on the roads, isn't it? Yes, for sure. But you said it already, the technology acceptance, that is one of the major topics. Interesting is that in Asia, for example, in Japan and China, the acceptance is very high. Instead, in Europe, it is increasing. It's very difficult to explain or also to understand why it, but we have to do a lot. Then. So we have to improve the investment. We have to improve the technology and to align. And we have to convince the people to accept it, to see the benefit and not only um, the negative points. So there must be done a lot. Well, Daniela, thank you so much for this. Uh, there is so much more we can discuss. We have not uh, talked about so many other aspects of autonomous driving and driverless cars. We did not have time for commercial vehicles also, but maybe we come back on that. But thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks a lot for the possibility. Have a nice day. And to all of you who were listening in, thanks for joining in. I was uh, talking to Daniela Meyer, who is the CTO of Automotive at Dell Technologies. 
Please stay tuned for more such episodes and conversations in Disruption Dialogues. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Hashtag Disruption Dialogues. If you are a strategy or market intelligence professional, we invite you to join our community on LinkedIn, Hashtag Disruption Dialogues.